What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again. And while we do have quite a few videos coming out today, the news just won't stop coming. Usually this would be something that we would cover in the Crypto Mining Morning Show, which you can watch live Monday through Friday, 9.45 a.m. to 10.45 a.m. Central Time. However, this is big news and it is just announced that we have information on the specifications for the new Intel Bitcoin mining ASIC. It is going to be named the BZ M2 and this info is coming from Anand Tech. Let's get into it right after a word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is myself. To support the channel, click the join button below the video and you will get access to our privately hosted rocket chat. Selecting the 199 option will get you access and after that you need to head over to the membership tab, scroll down and expand out your membership perks. Find the section for connecting on social media, and in that section there will be a secret registration URL to join Rocket Chat, where you can sign up to enjoy talking with other cryptocurrency enthusiasts and miners without spammers, scammers, or bots. Welcome back. We are quickly running out of sponsors compared to the amount of videos we need to do, so make sure you hit that join button and support the channel if you find this information helpful. So, like I said, this is coming from a non-tech and it was written by Dr. Ian Cutris on January 20th, 2022 at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time. We seem to have missed it this morning, but Intel's next gen Bitcoin ASIC called the BZM2 is built on the seven nanometer manufacturing process and features 137 giga hash a second at 2.5 watts per chip. So getting into this, it has been noted in the media that the at the upcoming ISSCC conference at the end of February, Intel is set to give a talk in entitled Bonanza Mine, an ultra low voltage energy efficient Bitcoin mining ASIC. It already has a lot of attention as it confirms the fact that Intel is working towards blockchain enabling hardware through a number of channels. We've been able to acquire more details about this chip ahead of the conference. The more compute power a miner has, the more of the blockchain rewards the miner will receive over a period of time. It always becomes a contest between the big players to get a larger share of the compute power in order to earn more rewards. Obviously what they're going into with this article is going to be talking about less power, more hash, and basically that's where the competitive nature comes in, especially when we're talking about ASICs and especially when we're talking about Bitcoin because we have so much institutional investment that these Bitcoin mining farms are massive. And the larger your farm is, basically means that you are going to be looking to get more and more efficient so that your profit margins are increased. And it looks like Intel is going to be working towards this. It does say in the early day of ASICs, these were essentially FPGA hardened IP blocks scaled up and scaled out. The need to produce and enable silicon very quickly made it very rushed to begin with, and the companies involved had limited experience of traditional silicon development and deployment timeframes. That was a number of years ago now, and some of these companies are on their eighth generation ASICs and are leading partners at the major foundries leading edge process technologies. A lot of this has to do with, of course, the popularity and success of Bitcoin. Because of cryptocurrency success just in general, what we have seen are companies that used to not have that access to foundries, etc., now having access and a say in, of course, the operations of these foundries. It is good news in general that basically that will bring more competition to the silicon market as well in theory. But with, of course, a big player like Intel, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. So the silicon is small, leading to high yields, and with the right advantage can be very profitable. For example, Bitmain's next generation ASICs product installs 384 chips in a system, and in a single transaction has already sold 78,000 systems to Marathon Digital Holdings for $879 million. And that's only one customer. Sometimes in a gold rush, it's those that sell the axes that make the money. However, in the context of more traditional silicon players, we haven't seen 
seen much movement on this front. The GPU vendors are fighting with miners and Ethereum, but there hasn't really been any movement on focused silicon in this field, at least until Intel started dropping hints. Back in December, Intel's Raja Kaduri hinted that the company was moving into this space, and with the talk listed at ISSCC next month, this confirms it. But they have more details here for us. According to an SEC filing, Intel's new chip is actually its second generation chip called the BZM2. Are they mining on the BZM1? <laughs> the filing is a four-year supply agreement between Intel and Grid Infrastructure starting on September 8th of 2021, and the BZM2 chip is designed specifically for SHA-256 cryptographic hash functions. While exact purchase agreement numbers are redacted, Grid is to supply an 18-month rolling forecast of requested supply that Intel will work towards. With a specific reservation quantity and minimum deposit at the start of the agreement, these chips will be delivered up to May of 2023. Although the contract can be extended, Intel provides no warranty on the chips except for dead on arrival and also provides three months support after each batch of chips are delivered. Here's the SEC filing. There are two versions of the BZM2 likely differing in power and performance. Although the exact numbers are redacted, instead we have to turn to details from the ISSCC talk. Here's what we know so far. Intel is building a chip on the 7 nanometer process, exactly which isn't stated. The documents have stated 7 nanometer, but the same document also refers to Intel 4 as 4 nanometer. In all likelihood, this means that the BZM2 is being built at Intel, and this could be one of the first IDM 2.0 customers customers for Intel utilizing Intel's in-house custom design team. The SEC filing is co-signed by Intel's GM of custom accelerators for context. The chip is going to be 14.16 millimeters squared, so a maximum of 4,000 chips per wafer. It operates at 1.6 gigahertz and generates 137 gigahash per second at 2.5 watts. 25 of these chips are used in a deep board configuration, voltage stacked at 335 millivolts per chip, totaling 8.875 volts on the main supply. It's worth noting that 335 millivolt per chip as a voltage minimum is insanely low. Intel says this is the most technically advanced Bitcoin ASIC to date, using an ultra low voltage design, specialized clocking strategies, and other circuit and microarchitectural optimizations, more details in the actual ISSCC talk in February. Intel is going to say at ISSCC that it takes 55 joules per terahash, although the math here doesn't make sense given the other numbers it is presenting. At 137 gigahash and 2.5 watts, it would mean 18.2 watt per terahash. For context, we can look here at what that compares to, and it would be the most power efficient ASIC miner to release, even compared to the latest Bitmain S19 JXP, which is at 21.5 watts per terahash. The S19 J Pro, which is pretty much the main thing that is out there in mining farms right now, is 29.5 watts per terahash. And the Micro BT M30S++ is 31 watts per terahash. Bitmain's latest generation is built on TSMC N5, showcases almost the same efficiency. We ran the numbers back from S19J Pro 104, built on the TSMC N7. Knowing that a full system contains 384 chips at 2750 to 32. 150 watts, it equals around 7 to 8 watts per chip, which is three times what Intel is suggesting their chip can do. We also are seeing reports that these TSMC N7 chips are over a billion transistors each. In order to, com to compete for density then, we're going to see systems with two to three times more chips. It's going to be a way for Intel to fill up its 7 nanometer fabs with small high yield silicon at any rate. 
rate. It's worth noting that if Intel had an order for 29.5 million chips, as noted above, for 867 million at perfect yield at 4,000 per wafer, it would take almost 7,500 wafers. Intel quotes market research that says that it expects the cryptocurrency mining hardware market to grow by $2.8 billion during 2021 to 2025. I spoke with a colleague who focuses on the mining ASIC space, and he stated that it's likely having U.S.-based ASIC production is a benefit for locality, language, and relations, and avoiding additional 25% tariffs currently on mining hardware. My guess is that Intel will be working with specific partners that have minimum order requirements for this sort of hardware. It's unlikely to mean much for the GPU market. Just hope they don't put one of the GPU boards as a way to help miners recoup their cost of the GPU itself. We're in a good timeline, right? The jokes. All right, so what are we looking at? We're looking at basically the possibility of the most efficient Bitcoin mining ASICs ever produced. It's coming from one of the world's largest silicon manufacturers, specifically within, of course, CPUs is what they're most widely known for. And that can only be, of course, good news for the industry as a whole. We've always been needing more and more competition within the Bitcoin mining ASICs realm. And in addition to that, what we are going to see is availability stateside, bringing, of course, that Bitcoin mining goodness from the ASIC side over to the states. Now, lots of stuff here is going on internationally with all the bans on cryptocurrency in China. However, they still manufacture a majority of the hardware to actually mine cryptocurrency or Bitcoin in particular. That's why on this channel we do cover GPU mining, not really because we completely despise ASIC mining, which we don't enjoy it as much. We've talked about these. You can check out, of course, all of my videos talking about ASIC versus GPU mining, but also because of availability. It's a lot more difficult for somebody stateside to invest in an expensive ASIC miner and then wait for shipping, pay the tariff costs, and maybe not even get their order ever because, you know, those things happen when you're shipping across seas. A lot more scams are available. This will be a better outlet. That being said, it doesn't look like it's going to be sold to the general public, unfortunately. And so what that means is because of the contracts that they're setting up, it's clear that Grid, the company Grid, is going to be receiving a majority of these, if not all of these, off of the get-go. It should mean, though, as new miners come out, that we do have opportunity to purchase these on the second-hand market, and we'll just have to see how it shakes out. Overall, just keep mining, stay calm, all that sort of stuff. Check out the shirt down below here. Let me know what you guys think of this new Bitcoin mining ASIC from Intel. Do you think it's a hash or a pass? If you are able to pick one up, would you pick one up? And at what price point would it make sense? As more details come out, we will cover it here on this channel. So be sure to hit the subscribe and notification bell so that you are notified when new content releases. We are releasing a ton of content right now. I'm trying to grow the channel as much as possible and I'm looking for more and more partnerships. So be sure to hit the about tab and email me at inquiry at sonofatech.com for any potential of partnerships. Thanks for watching. I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more or check out this playlist for more crypto content related topics.